I love the game that you're calling the uh, the first game of I guess the picking up the Durant pieces, right? Uh, what is the sense around this team, the Oklahoma City Thunder? Mike? Well, I think uh, Russell Westbrook will average 78 points per game this year, <laughs> and they will surprise people. Uh, he will pass occasionally. Now, that, that's actually mean to say because um, I, I can't wait to watch how Russell Westbrook approaches and attacks this season. Attacks is the right word um, because he wants to so prove that this is still a terrific team, and obviously by him by signing the extension that he, he still wants to be there. Um, you know, he's a great, great player. And now we're going to see, can he adjust? Can he make those around him better? Can he, you know, take that next step to, to help fill part of the void? Because you can't fill uh, the void of what Kevin Durant has left there. Um, I mean, the guy is such a special player. And night in and night out, night out you rely on him. So I, I'm really curious to see how Westbrook plays this whole season. Yeah, so who's going to be his uh, Robin, right? Who's going to be the number two there? Is there somebody that... That you, no, I don't, I don't think so yet, Rich. Um, you know, Victor Oladipo, I think, is going to have a, a a really good season playing with Westbrook because he, you know, the defense is so centered on what Westbrook's going to do. And then you've got Ennis Cantor and and Stephen Adams. Um, these guys are both capable. Uh, obviously, Adams more defensive player, but you know, Cantor is is an unbelievable scorer down low. So they're going to need a host of people to. To play well, obviously, for them to get back in the playoff picture. Um, and just to see how Westbrook, you know, is he going to look to score all the time? Or is he going to try the, the alternate route uh, where he had all those triple doubles when Durant was out with injury? It's, it, to me, it's one of the fascinating stories of the season. And then, of course, you, you know, when you, when you first looked at the schedule, Mike, and you're like, okay, we'll get Ben Simmons and the Sixers in there. And <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? I mean, have you seen any team that, 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 <laughs> I, I, I've never seen anything like this, and a lot of people think it's the karma of, uh, the, of trying to tank, that all the guys that they tank for um, aren't healthy to play. Mike. Yeah, that, that's a good narrative, but I, I don't think that's the case. But again, I, I, same thing, I, I feel for the Philly sports fans uh, and the basketball fans, it's a great basketball town, as you know, and for them to every year hope, okay, we're going to start turning around this year, and then something else, the other – the other shoe drops, and it's it's um, it's so unfortunate because some of these guys are such talented players. The one thing for me, though, I I've never seen uh, Embiid play in person, so I can't wait to see him play because I've heard such raves from people uh, that he's not just a good player; he has a chance to be a great player. So, from that standpoint, you know, the, is there light at the end of the tunnel for the 76ers? Yet yeah, perhaps it's still a really long tunnel. Um, but if they get, you know, Okafor comes back and Noel. And obviously Simmons, because Simmons uh, has a chance to be very special. So maybe, uh, but they are so long overdue for something positive to cheer for. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.